As uh, many of you know, you know, I'm the first elected official of Korean descent to hold any public office at the state level. What you might not know is that I was able to run for public office only because of the sacrifices of so many people before me, people who have stood up against bigotry, against racism, and worked so hard to overcome society's stereotypes against Asian Americans. Racism toward Americans of Asian descent in this country, as well as the fight against the normalization of that hatred, goes back over 100 years. As my colleague noted, the Chinese Seclusion Act of 1882 legalized the vilification and stereotyping of Chinese men by taking away their rights to marry, own homes, vote, and led many of them to a culture of shame over nothing more than who they were. The Japanese internment camp of 1942, under Executive Order 9066, turned hundreds of thousands of Asian Americans into outsiders in their own country, even as many of them served heroically in all branches of the U.S. Armed Forces. As, as, and now, we're repeating history, only this time our Muslim, Hispanic, and Me Mexican brothers and sisters are the targets. I refuse to sit quietly on now a whole generation of immigrant families and children to be treated like they will always be foreigners in our country. I'm proud to stand today with my colleagues and do whatever we can as a state to protect all immigrant communities. I thank the speaker. I thank my good friends Francisco Moya and Marcos Crespo for taking the lead on these measures to protect all immigrant communities. And to all the Muslim, Mexican, Haitian, Bangladeshi, Chinese, Korean, Hispanic, Indian children, all immigrant groups from Steinway Street to Gun Hill Road to Canal Street to Rosewood Avenue, don't let this president and this moment in history make you feel like less than a person. You are the future America. You can flip the script and use this moment to take ownership of who you are and your place in this country. I vote on the affirmative speaker.